Next we have George Wald, who is the winner of the Nobel Prize in 1967 for biology and is also a member of the executive committee of the Federation of American Scientists. I was going to say that what brought a biologist here is a concern for life. Life has never been as threatened in the entire history of this planet as it is at present. Uh, the situation can be put to you very plainly and clearly. The present stockpiles of just the so-called strategic nuclear weapons, those are the big ones, more or less in the megaton, a million tons of TNT range. The present stockpiles in the United States and Soviet Union add up to the explosive force of about 16 billion tons of TNT. There are about four billion people on the earth. That means four tons of TNT for every man, woman, and child on the earth. In addition, both sides have already stockpiled tens of thousands of so-called tactical nuclear weapons and have already stockpiled the material for hundreds of thousands more. So I better tell you what a tactical nuke is. The bomb that in a moment leveled the city of Hiroshima and by the end of that year, 1945, had killed 140,000 people. Rates in the present nuclear arsenals as a rather small tactical weapon. The strategic weapons are in the million tons of TNT range. That one was a mere miserable 12 and a half thousand tons. So uh, that's what a tactical nuclear weapon is. And uh, there is an interesting uh, dialogue going on in the pages of the Atomic Scientist Bulletin. If that stuff were used, and you understand even the, uh, our last Secretary of Defense conceded that the concept of limited nuclear war, everybody realizes, pure crazy. Uh, so, if that stuff were used, uh, there is a dialogue that's been going on in the pages of the Atomic <laughs> Scientist Bulletin as to whether any human being would be left on Earth. Because, you see, I've just talked about the explosive equivalent of these weapons, but the fallout from them enters the atmosphere and the stratosphere and eventually encircles the globe. Uh, there is a good chance by now that we've already stockpiled all the hardware necessary to wipe out the human race and much of the rest of life on this planet. It would be in the course of evolution of life on this planet, the first do-it-yourself extinction. And uh, what these people have done is to try to arouse their fellow citizens to this terrible peril. You know, the government keeps talking our security. This is our insecurity. And where did they go? They went to General Electric, a, a, a firm with a with an innocuous name that a great many Americans associate with their light bulbs. So let me just say to you that General Electric, in fact, is engaged in an anti-life enterprise in two ways. One, it is the principal maker of nuclear power plants. And the other, I'm about to read to you, I carry with me everywhere these days one of the most interesting documents I know. It is the Department of Defense publication each year of the top 100 arms contractors. So looking up General Electric here, I find it's number four in the top 100 with two billion forty-two and a half million dollars in defense contracts just in the past year. So. Um, Really, in a sense, they went to a, a place that's central in this enterprise. And uh, what they were trying to do in a nonviolent way, because the violence one commits on the nose cones of, of nuclear missiles uh, has, uh, is no violence in our estimation compared to the violence that those missiles would commit on people, on life. And so uh, what they did was, in my opinion, a non-violent attempt in desperation, in desperation that is completely justified by the fact that there's nowhere else to turn at present but to try to shake the American people into a realization of their peril. And what is it we want? You know, there's a red, or if you wish, a red, white, and blue herring 
uh, that says, ah, those kooks are for uh, unilateral, unilateral disarmament. No, no, no. We're for bilateral, for multilateral disarmament. And please realize that the word disarmament became inoperative in official American parlance already many years ago. It unfortunately uh, means something. It means fewer arms. And its place has been taken by two terms that you've all been taught to recognize. You have them all the time. They are arms limitation and arms control. Well, you can control arms uh, up or down. So far, it's always been up. And no matter how far up they go, they'll always be limited. The American public is probably by now the most brainwashed public in the world. And what was done by these people who are in trial here is to try to shock them into wakefulness so as to save our lives, the lives of our children, and to make life possible for their children. Thank you. Any questions for any of the witnesses?